for convergence. So one of the important method is nothing but the D Lambert's ratio test. D Lambert's ratio test. This is the method we know the convergence and divergence of the series. Just now I told you the nature of the series are of three, three types. That is nothing but the convergent, divergent, and the oscillatory series. And the categorization of the series. Generally, if you see the series, the series. series the category is known as it in many types the first one is the positive series positive series positive series in the new lecture you can understand what is a positive series positive series is the series in which all the parts are positive that type of series is called as the positive series let's make a series S minus series. The series which is having plus minus signs that is called as the plus minus series. And we are having a special case of the plus minus series that is we are calling as the alternating series. Alternating series. What is this alternating series? It is basically is a plus minus series, but it is having the plus minus in orders. One plus 1 minus, 1 plus, 1 minus, or first minus, then plus, all the hit plus minus signs, that type of series is called as the alternating series. That is the basically plus minus series. Now we are having different, different tests, different, different tests for this different, different series. Now today we are going to discuss only one famous test that is called as the D. Allenberg's ratio test to know the nature of the positive series. We are having many tests for checking the positive series, some standard test by using the word uh, uh, GB series test, by using the P harmonic test as for convergence, comparison test, Cauchy's NPU test, Cauchy integral test, then this is the B MNS ratio test. There are many tests are there. Today we are going to discuss the B MNS ratio test and that is to only to handle, only to know the nature of the positive series, not the plus minus. Okay, so error recording that is positive series. Positive series is the series in which all the terms are positive. So now we want to know what is the nature of the positive series. Positive series exactly we can write like this. For example, you see this positive series I am writing here. Here we have taken in the test also. Let summation will be the positive series. I am writing an example. Here I am writing that is summation 1 by n. Summation 1 by n. This is a positive series. We can write in the expanded form as 1 by 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 and so on. 1 by 4 and so on. This is the positive series. Why this is positive? Because all the things are positive. That's why this is called as the positive series. Now, I want to know. I will also bring up a simple series for the sake of understanding. Summation y n. We can take complex examples also. But if you understand the simple then you can go from simple to the word complex things, difficult things also. So let us see what is the what uh, the definition and what is the method uh, given by the B R numbers, and that is uh, called as the ratio test. Why ratio is the formula given by him? It is in the form of the ratio test. So this is called as the B R numbers ratio test. So what is the condition taken by him? See, let summation and then be the positive series. So first condition, it should be whatever the series you are checking for the convergence. That should be a positive series. And the formula given by K is n times to infinity mu n by n plus 1. Mu n is nothing but the nth term, and mu n plus 1 is nothing but the n plus 1th term. Now, what we have to do? We have to calculate the limit of this ratio mu n by mu n plus 1. That is equal to, if the limit exists, that is equal to some L. Then, based on the n value, we are having different, different conditions. If L is greater than 1, then the series is said to be convergent. If n is less than 1, then the series is said to be divergent. If m is equal to 1, test fails. Test fails, where does it mean test fails means? This test is not applicable. You have to go for the different test. You have to. And uh, if you see in the what uh, sequence and series, we are having systematic procedure. In this test fails, what we have to be, we, what we have to do, we are having procedure also. So let us see one example on this one. This is the one definition. And 
Sometimes we can write the, we can design indirectly also. We need intense density instead of taking mu by mu plus one. We can put mu plus one divided by mu ratio also. And suppose that is equal to n. Now you see that condition. Before condition, what was the condition in the before slide? If you see l greater than one, series is convergent. But here, because we reverse the ratio, that's why l less than one, series will be convergent. And if l is greater than one, series will be divergent. If l is equal to what test phase. So that is the condition is applicable according to your formula. What we are going to choose, you make n tends to infinity. U n by u plus one you are taking, or u n plus one by u n we are taking. Let us try one example so you can understand. And just now I tell you, if the test fails, what we have to do if the ratio test fails? If the ratio test fails, so one can go for the Rabe's test. At that particular point, you can apply the Rabe's test. And again, this is for the positive series, Rabe stress. The condition is let summation given be the positive series. And the formula is nothing but limit n tends to infinity, n you know, un by un plus 1 minus 1 equal to n. This is the formula given by the Rabe. And let value equal to then. Again, we are having the CL condition as we learned in case of the DLMS ratio test. n is greater than 1, series is converges. If n is uh, Less than one, series diverges, and is equal to one test phase. So whenever the ratio test phase, we will go for the rabbit test. I sometimes, if it involves a, then we can go for the logarithm test also because of the what the uh, time constant. Just we are focusing on the ratio test and the rabbit test. So I will make one example. We will get the clarity regarding. Let us take the one problem on the ratio test. Now the problem is like this in the sequence and series. Test for convergence of the following series. Always test for convergence. What does it mean test for convergence? We want to know whether the series is convergent or not. That's why we are uh, writing the uh, question in this way. Test for convergence of the following series. The series is given as x by 1 into 2 plus x square by 2 into 3 plus x cubed by 3 into 4 and so on plus x power n divided by n into n square plus 1. Yeah, this is the series. Now we are writing directly. We are writing what uh, nth term we are writing. Nth term is nothing but the nth term of the given series. It is positive series. We can easily apply what the ratio test. That condition is satisfied. We are writing summation here. Summation here when we are equal to we are writing the nth term. You can see here. This is the nth term. That is reality here. This this is what nth term. If that is not given, you can easily calculate also. Here by n square, n square came, but this is not the n square, actually it is n and n plus 1. Here you can, you can see how if the n term is not given, for example, if this trend is not given, then how to calculate the n term? How to calculate the n term of the series? You see here, in the denominator, we are having work 1 into 2, 2 into 3, 3 into 4. I am taking only the first terms. What are the first terms? 1, 10, for as well. These are the first terms. Now no. I am taking the difference and the first in the difference 10 minus 1. 10 minus 1 equal to 1. I am taking 3 minus 3 equal to 1. If I take 4 minus 3, that is also equal to 1. So what does it mean? If you remember in the AP series, you know the AP series, the AP series. We discuss this. If thirty minus three, the second term minus the first term is equal to the ninth term minus two p. If all are equal and so on, that is equal to t n r n s t n r n s one. All are equal. Then we are calling this as a small d, and that small d is called as the common difference. That is called as the common difference. If we can say that if the single minus T n minus 1, this difference is same. For example, T t minus T and T3 minus T2 is same, then we can say that this series is in AP. This series in AP. And we are having a random formula to find the nth term of the AP series. The formula is T will be equal to A plus N minus 1 equal D. This is the formula for finding the nth term of the AP series. 
Here, what is A? A is nothing but the first term. A is the first term. A is the first term. A is the first term, and as anything of the quantum difference. So, here we will see D equal to 1 in the right now. D equal to 1 here, and D equal to 1. Now, we are substituting. What is the nth term? Tm remain equal to, we can write this as 1 plus m i as 1, m to 1. If you simplify this, you are getting as the n. So that's why right. you see here, here we are writing this as what? In the denominator, we are writing the first is nothing but the n. In the same fashion, if you take the second one, second terms, that is nothing that 2, 3, 4, and so on. Here also, if you see, the common difference is b equal to n, common difference is 1, and but here a equal to 2. The first term is nothing but 2. We are finding the same by using the same logic. The nth term, that is 2 plus n minus 1 into 1. If you simplify all this, we are getting this as n plus 1. So that's why, by seeing this behavior, x plus x by 1 into 2 plus x squared by 2 into 3 and so on. If you see, what is the power of the x? That is nothing but the 1, 2, 3 and so on. That's why just now we have seen uh, that is nth term is nothing but the n. So we are writing this as x power n, x power n divided by n into n plus 1. So this is nothing but what? The nth term of the series, Neyman series. Here the nth term is given. If nth term is not given, like this logic we have to apply and we have to write the nth term of the series. And that is nothing but the summation u n. We have to write. This is. And one more thing you have to understand how to verify whatever the nth term written by you that is the correct one. How to verify? You have to substitute any given to 1 to 3 and so on in the nth term, and in turn you should get the series. In turn, you should get the series. If you are not getting the series, so some mistake is there, some error, some error is there in your nth term. So, like this, you can verify. And one more thing, sometimes what happens whenever we are writing the nth term. Uh, we unable to cover all the terms of the series. So in in uh, in those in those cases, you can do something like this. Uh, you are having one property of the series. Uh, finite number of deletion or the addition of the terms to the series will not alter, will not change the nature of the series. So we can we can remove some terms or we can add some terms in the series. So in that way also, I will you are following how to write down the nth term of the series. So this is the what positive series and nth term is nothing but x power n divided by m into n plus 1 that is the nth term. Now what we are writing according to the formula now we are writing what we want u n plus 1. u n plus 1 and u n plus 1 some student face some student face difficulty generally some students face difficulty in writing n plus 1 and that is very easy very easy to understand. You look here. Here, u n plus 1. You see this. What is the nth term? Even we are having the nth term is nothing but u n equal to, we are having as x power n divided by n into n plus 1. This is nothing but the nth term of the series. Now, what we are doing? How to write u n plus 1? Simply what we are doing? We are replacing 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 n by n plus 1. Why? Because while teaching I experienced this. Uh, so many students, they unable to understand how to write the u n plus 1. That is the very easy thing. We have to replace n by n plus 1. Wherever n is there, at that place you have to write the n plus 1. For example, you, you see here, here, we are writing this as what? u n plus 1 we are writing. u n plus 1 means there is nothing that we can write as u n plus 1 will be equal to x power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 into n plus 1 n plus 1 that is plus 2. So this is nothing but what? n plus 1 plus n plus 1 plus 1. That is nothing but x power n plus 1, x plus n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 into n plus 2. This is nothing but your u n plus 1, u n plus 1. Then now we work what? u n we work 
and u n plus one over now we are applying the limit u n enters to infinity we are taking the ratio u n by u n plus one now we are simplifying that one we are simplifying after the simplification you see here we are getting uh, by taking common or just the cancellation and as my i bet as n tends to infinity one by n is to zero so finally we are getting this as this is equal to one plus one plus zero divided by x we are getting here that is one plus zero divided by x so finally answer we are getting as the one by x one by x and how we are getting this u n by u n plus one you can easily understand this this is actually limit n tends to infinity u n by u n plus one value that is we are writing as this is as it is limit n tends to infinity we are writing what is u n u n x power n divided by n n to n plus one now i have to take the one in division we have to take Shall I take the reciprocal? Reciprocal. What is u n plus one? U n plus one is nothing but n plus one n two n plus two divided by x power n plus one. This is the ratio. Now we can do some cancellations. How we are doing the cancellation here? You can clearly can observe here. Then I n tends to infinity. We are writing this as this is as it is. We are copying x power n divided by n n to n plus one as it is we are writing here. Now since we are also going to having n plus one into n plus two, we are writing this as x power n one into x x power n plus one can be written as x power n to x x. Here x power n x power n gets cancelled. Here now we are taking what n common. Now right? n tends to infinity. We are taking n common from the numerator from this factor. N common one plus one by n we can write here also we are taking n common we can write this as one plus two by n divided by here n already there here also we are taking n common if you take n common this can be write, written as one plus one by n and this x is remain as it is now you can do the cancellation this n this n or this n this n gets cancelled and as we know that as n tends to infinity as n tends to infinity implies one by n always tends to zero. So wherever we are having one by n term, we can substitute zero. So finally, we are getting this as if you apply the limit. Finally, we are getting this as that is one plus zero, and here also one plus zero, and divided by here also we are getting one plus zero, and x is as it is. So finally, this is nothing but limit value we are getting as that n. Generally, we have taken the definition as n. So generally, we got this as limit may be equal to L, which is nothing but one by x. We got the limit value, the limit of the ratio u n by u n plus one equal to n one. Now we yeah, are we are applying the conditions. Already we discussed the conditions. Let us recall the conditions. The first condition is L is greater than one. Series converges. Series converges. Converges. Second condition. L is less than any series diverges. Series diverges. And the third condition, L equal to test fails. Test fails. So these are the conditions we are applying. Here because L equal to be got as 1 by x, now we are writing the series converges if 1 by x is greater than 1. 1 by x is greater than 1 means that is nothing that if x is less than 1, if we cross multiply, if x is less than 1, in the series, the measurement of the series is nothing but the conversion. If 1 by x is less than 1, less than 1, that implies nothing but x greater than 1, the measure of the series is nothing but the diverges. And test phase 1 by x equal to 1, that is nothing but x equal to 1 in the test phase. So this we got, now the plan we got ratio test to the positive series, we got this. And generally, whatever we put for the in the example, actually we have taken a power series in which the x is n1. Now further, now we have to know the nature of this, but the ratio test fails at x equal to 1. Now we have want to know what is the nature of the series at x equal to 1. If we substitute x equal to 1, already we are having at the back. Enthropic means nothing here. Here we are having at the top. 
This is x power 1 divided by n into n plus 1. We are substituting x equal to 1. If you substitute x equal to 1, n power n divided by n into n plus 1, that is nothing but 1 by n into n plus 1. Now, this is the nth term. Why we have substituted this x equal to 1? Because our ratio test, unable to know the nature of the series at the point x equal to 1, test fails. That's why we substituted x equal to 1. Now, we want to know what is the behavior of the series at the point x equal to 1. Now, again, what we are doing, we are taking the n plus 1. That is nothing but just the same thing, 1 by n plus 1 into n plus 2. Now, we are applying the rabbit's test we are applying. What is the formula of the rabbit? Just now I told you, that is nothing but rabbit's test formula is joint n tends to infinity n into mu n by mu n plus 1 minus 1 minus. This limit we have to calculate. If it is equal to n, again it is having the same condition as the ratio test. If this we need to calculate. Now we are calculating that way. We are taking unit n test infinity 9 by 9 plus 1. Here we wrote the formula. Now we are applying that we already we are having got the simplification. We are by 9 plus 1 already we calculated previously. From there we are directly we are taking after doing the simplification. Just now I showed you how to calculate the limit. Same steps we are following. We are taking what uh, n common from the numerator from the denominator. First, we are taking the LCM. Then we are taking n common from the numerator, n common from the denominator. We are cancelling all those things and we are writing maximum terms in the form of 1 by n, 2 by n, something like this. Why? Because as n tends to infinity, 1 by n tends to 0. So finally, we are getting as the limit value as the, we are getting this a value as the p we are getting. And p is the other one, obviously. So therefore, by rabbit stress, we can say that the condition is L is greater than 1. By rabbit stress, the series will be converges. So therefore, we can say that the behavior of the series at x equal to 1 is nothing but the convergent. And that we got by the rabbit stress. Now, finally, we can write by what complete uh, investigation of this problem, positive series, nature. Already we got x less than 1 in the previous slide. x less than 1. Already we got x less than 1. The series is what? Converges. And x greater than 1 diverges. And who are Now we got x equal to 1. The series converges. Now we are combining all these statements. Final conclusion is nothing but if x less than or equal to 1, the series is converges. And the series is diverges or x is greater than 1. So this is the procedure to know the nature of the series by applying the B elements ratio test and the rabbit stress. I hope you understood the concept. In actual today, what we discuss, first we discuss what is the definition of the set, that is the prerequisite T, then you discuss the definition of the function, then you define sequence, and I focus a little bit regarding the word significance and the importance and the application of the sequence in series. We learn definition of the sequence and some example pertaining to the sequence, then series, and particularly, we focus on how to know the convergence of the series. And we have taken one famous, we learned one famous method to know the nature of the positive series. That is nothing but the D elements ratio test as well as the rabbit test. I hope all of you, you understood this concept. Uh, thank you, Hanan.